and they talk about this seeing this light and they talk about this experience that they've had they're never the same after that because you have a motivator there you understand that there's something happening here this is real this is not a joke and so the motivation is there in front of you all the time and I want to get the paradise that's what I want to gain and I sure as heck don't want to go to the hellfire so I don't want to lose my chance at paradise but I sure don't want to wind up in a hellfire so this is strong motivation being close to God being near Allah in the next life is the primary motivation behind every single Muslim if anybody wants to know what is what is it that the Muslims want what are they looking for it's not something in this earth it's something in the next universe the universe of paradise that's what we're looking for what are the benefits now for somebody who is because we know that to enter into complete submission and surrender to the creator of the heavens and the earth now mm -hmm. yeah. you have to follow this last and final messenger now if you follow him what are the benefits in this life and the hereafter well first of all in this life you're going to have a much easier way to go because there are some things that the creator Allah has revealed in Islam that we wouldn't know otherwise for instance how to eat and drink one of the things very important that we do today is to sit down when we eat and drink the doctors and scientists and lab specialists are going to tell you that a lot of the everyday problems that people are having in their uh, esophagus the hiatal hernias that they get and so on could be avoided if people would simply sit down when they eat or drink and this is the teaching in Islam when you eat or drink sit down Believe it or not, that was taught to us 1400 years ago by Muhammad and we see today, look, oh, if we'd have done that, we'd have been way ahead of the game. And another thing, when we talk about cleaning your teeth, he used a tooth stick and said, if I could make this an obligation on you, I would do so, but he wouldn't. And still, and what is the benefit here? Because if you're using that tooth stick that he used called miswak, what it does, it cleans the teeth, removes the tartar, the buildup that comes on it, but it doesn't destroy the enamel. And it actually takes care of the gums, keeps down periodontitis, and uh, uh, the tongue itself is uh, protected with this. And the coating inside when you use it, to, even for your stomach. And all of this from a stick. We know this from that one thing and so many other things too even how to go to the bathroom he taught us how to properly use the toilet the facilities so that when we come away we're clean the hygiene was so important and if you imagine 1400 years ago when we talk about hygiene nobody can match the hygiene of the muslims even our habit of washing that we do and the ceremonial wash that we do before we pray has been copied by doctors and that's what they use when they do surgery this can be tr proven by the doctors who formulated this concept a thousand years ago in spain and they happen to be muslim doctors now these are some of the small details Give us oh, there are thousands. Give us Would you major. like to know that we came up with some, I, I was going to do a, a contest a few years ago with the Muslim youth and let them come up with something I called Muhammad A to Z and who could come up with the best one for A and B and C and go through all the letters. And I was wondering, would we have that many? When it was all over, they had so many and it went beyond ABCs. It just was so many. We put up a website about it, MuhammadAtoZ.com and it, then it still got bigger and bigger and bigger and I couldn't handle it. So I said, okay, A to Z, what his companion said, A to Z, what his character was, A to Z. And so finally we put up a new website and it's called prophetofislam.com and all of that stuff is there. Everything is there. Uh, everything we did on that. But you'll never put everything about Muhammad in any one place. You will not be able to do that. You can try, but I am trying myself and I said, I don't even have a tenth. I don't have even a, a half of a tenth of a percent of how much this man is known for and things that he did things that people said about him and throughout the centuries the effect that he's had on so many other people and one simple man who lived in a simple build a little room and on a dirt floor and slept on a little bamboo mat so everything we need to know in life everything that we need to be successful in this life and the hereafter did he bring for all of mankind let me tell you what somebody said in 1970s, Michael Hart wrote a book, The 100 Most Influential Men in History of the World. That was the name of his book. 100, the ranking of the 100 most influential men in the history of the world. I think that's a, a big title. I think that's what it was. 
Michael Hart. Check it out, though. And in it, he puts Muhammad as number one. He said no human being had more influence on their society around them and future generations in the way of what we call secular and religion and government and, and, and he gave this long list and quite a bit about it. It's talking about Muhammad and this is not a Muslim. And he received so much condemnation from other scholars. And he almost became defensive and wanted to put out another book and said, well, how about uh, the most 100 in the last uh, 100 years or, you know, let's get off the subject. Because he said, I can't deny that this man has had the most influence on people in general, on humanity and the world itself. So I believe that that's something to consider. I wish that people would know that even people like Gandhi, Gandhi is uh, very famous for his what? He, he was serving the people, he had a cause, and what he would do, he would uh, give up a lot of his own for the sake of getting a message to the people. But he wasn't trying to lead them in a, in, as a religious leader per se, but to overcome a political problem of the way that the people were being treated. The people in India were being horribly mistreated. And subhanAllah, look at this, he gets so much inspiration from who? He's quoting from Muhammad. He says, and we have it on the website, go read what he said. He said, I have come to conclude now in reading of Muhammad that it wasn't the sword that won over the people. It was the heart. And look how he begins to, oh my God, when he starts talking, he says, this is Gandhi talking about Muhammad. And he says, when I came to the last volume and I was reading the end of the books, he said, I became sad. Because I wish that there was more to read about this great man. Well, with that said, I hope that people take the opportunity to get to know this man because... Come to the website. The Prophet of Islam. Let me put it right there. Prophetofislam.com Dot com. With that said, I'd like to thank you for being on the show. And I hope everybody takes the opportunity to get to know this man who's been sent to the whole of mankind. Right as a messenger with the last and final revelation, which is the Quran. So you can visit this website that Sheikh Yusuf Estes has mentioned. That said, thank you for being with us, Sheikh Estes. Salaam alaikum, Jazakallah Haidi. I'd like to thank everybody who has been tuning in to the Dean Show. And I encourage you all to get to know this man, the last and final messenger to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him.